For certain, sure, there's nothing better than the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum if you like history and memories. This is part two of our tour on the A.J. Foyt exhibition. You'll never see anything like it. Okay, Mr. Sports Car, Marshall Pruitt. This is uh, this is your this is starting to become your era since you're still a kid. What are your memories of this car? Well, AJ had some great success racing with the recently departed Preston Hen. Unfortunately, won the 24 Hours of Daytona with him. Enjoyed his sports car stuff. Decided that you know maybe I should start my own team. And you have Copenhagen, which was his IndyCar sponsor, decided to sponsor this too. Just beautiful. This is the most iconic sports car of the 1980s for sure. Definitely one of the top five of all time, and just big German badassness. You know, because you know, AJ loves German. Cars. Yeah, he's, <laughs> and German food. He's a big. He loves sauerkraut. He told me that once. Um, but the lines are pretty cool, aren't they? I mean, that's the way race cars should look. Just different. Now, John Meekum. You know, the, the other thing about Foyt was he was a good road racer, and Dan Gurney will be the first to tell you that since they co-drove to the 67 Le Mans victory dealer. But A.J. would go run. He he ran sports cars when there wasn't a sprint car or midget or dirt car race or an Indy car race to, one, to run, and John Meekham hired him for this, and this, <laughs> this car is called a Hussein. A.J. was a big Barack, Barack uh, Obama. fan, I, as I remember. Yeah. Uh, but the Governor's Cup in Nassau, this, that was a big deal back then. He rode that there. Then, of course, this is the IROC series, which was one of the great series in the history of racing because it brought Formula One, NASCAR, and IndyCar guys together. And they road raced, and they oval raced, and it was just, there was nothing like it. But uh, I will tell you that uh, it's still pretty cool that the IROC series, the, the pictures of the old IROC series are just, it just tells you how what a big deal it became and they had sponsors for it and everybody wanted to be part of it then we go to this i think is the craziest thing foyt ever did driving the oldsmobile aerotech in 1987 257 miles an hour this is a march chassis with all this bodywork bolted on and i want you to think about this that was 30 years ago and he, he goes 257 miles an hour at this special track in Texas that was like almost eight miles long. And he was going 300 miles an hour. And I said, wasn't it a little unstable? Well, yeah, a little bit, but, you know, and this little tiny cockpit. And how about this big rear wing, Marshall? That'll really keep you planted, wouldn't it? Yeah, this thing was all about power and a little bit of downforce, no drag. So just a huge slippery body. I miss the fact that we don't do this kind of fun, crazy, we're going to make an Indy car into a sports car and break speed records and spend a lot of money. And this thing, for those who uh, weren't there to see it, got a lot of publicity, too. Yeah, it did. And I think that's the first time I saw wheel, you know, the little wheel guards and, and the Aerotech. I don't know. Floyd, I asked him, I said, is that the craziest thing you ever did? And he goes, oh, I reckon it was pretty crazy. But, you know, sure. for certain, sure. Then the, this was the American Challenge Cup winner in 1964. Anthony Joseph Foyt won the Governor's Cup and the Nassau Trophy race in this car, which is, you know, again, showed his versatility. The guy was a really – all the great road racers from around the world came to these things, and Foyt kicked their butt. So he, liked, he loved dirt cars and all that, but he, was, he could drive whatever you put him in, including <laughs> this Oldsmobile Cutlass. And I reckon A.J. should have probably won three or four Daytona 500s. He tells a good story about having the 78, the 78 race, which put him on the map with the big fight between Allison and Yarborough. He was actually running third behind him, and when they crashed, he backed off, and Petty and Pearson both passed him because he, was he, he wasn't used to racing to the, to the yellow, to the finish, to our finish line after yellow, so that cost him. But here's, here's his very first car he ever won a USAC race in, Wally Muskowski was one of the real characters in racing back in the 60s. Uh, he didn't suffer fools and very few, I mean, you had to almost be a champion to drive for Wally. He was very picky about who drove his cars. And A.J. won in Springfield with this in 1960. Sorry, Ducoin. And it was just amazing that he had gone from, you got to remember, he just started his career in 1958. And six or seven dirt dirt tracks around the country, Sacramento, DuCoin, Indianapolis, Springfield, Syracuse, wherever they had to run, that was part of the Champ Car Trail. 
And then Marshall goes over to this nice little car, which I believe is now owned by one Mr. Tony Stewart. This was this is just a badass dirt car. Grant King built it, and uh, I don't know. He's there's something about this car just looks. This car reminds me of AJ Foyt because it's big and sassy and burly and fast. That's good. Big and sassy and burly and fast. That's is that. No, I don't know what that is, but. See, you could fit in this one, brother. Uh, I could sit on top of it. Yeah, that's I might might fit through the top. I don't know about the seat. How about these nice? We we went from eight inch tires to these beauties, which is kind of the reason. Is look, Marshall, look at this. This is what he won and Ducoin with, and then he goes fifteen years later, and this is what the tires happen. So that's why the dirt tracks became hard, slickies, and dusty, and they're not. They don't have big cushions like they used to. And of course. I just happened to be lucky enough to be at Milwaukee in 1965 when our boy put this. That's right. The day before they were in, they were the day before this race, they were in Springfield, and he ran this car at Springfield. And uh, he comes to Milwaukee. His rear engine car isn't ready. He says, "Let's just unload this thing." He unloads this thing off the trailer at Milwaukee. Now this is 1965, the, the, the rear engine revolution has already taken a hold of IndyCar racing. And he goes out and practices and Steve Stapp, who was a pretty good race driver and a, and a damn good mechanic and car owner in his own right, is helping him and he tells Foyt, you're one of the fastest cars out there and Foyt tells him, I'm going to smack you if you don't quit lying to him. He said, I'm not lying to you, you're one of the fastest cars out there. And not only was he one of the fastest cars out there, he put this on the pole and it's still to this day, the lar there was probably 35,000 people. It's the largest ovation I've ever heard. I I've never heard anything like it. Standing, just people going crazy. And Dan Gurney started next to him in a Lotus. So I, I don't know how you can, uh, it's got to be one of the five greatest things that ever happened to AJ in his career as far as just performance wise and just being a badass. And then of course, this is the car that he won the 1972 Daytona 500 in. The Wood Brothers, and they were here the other day. Uh, matter of fact, they all were here the other night when they had a little tribute, and they all signed it. Pretty nice. But uh, I'm mean, not only did he win the Daytona 500, he won it by a lap. So uh, they didn't take real kindly to them, them Yankees coming down there stealing all their money and their glory. But like I said, AJ probably should have won Daytona three or four times.